hello, hello, hello to you, YouTube. Hello to you, my fellow metalheads. This is my village, Duke Grishnak, reporting in with another video for you. So, gonna be doing an album review, a Christmas themed album review. Ooh, you know why? Because, tis the season. Alright, so, I'm going to be reviewing a split EP. Yo, so it's 25 minute album with a total of six different bands, seven songs. The name of the album is Slashing Through the Snow. And it is a compilation of the following bands. Bovidinia, Bation Master, Before the Harvest, The Cake is a Lie, Cerebus, Cunt Cuntly. Cunt Cuntly has two songs, the last two songs. So, yeah, let's dive right into this. Tis the season, y'all. But anyway, that's how it starts off. It sets the mood, and it's boom, and Volvidinia is like. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, what else would you imagine? It's one of the brutal death metal slam bands and shit. I mean, what's gonna happen? Volvidinia slay it. They always do. I love that band, so I'm not gonna focus too much on them. Uh, my first real thing I notice is for the first two songs, it's not super Christmassy. Yes. They do throw in some bells in the background and have little sound clips, Christmas related things that they say in there. But the music itself fundamentally does not sound like Christmas music. Yes, I know, it's death metal, obviously it's not going to be sounding just like Christmas music. But there's no familiar riffs or there's no, um, you know, real semblance of a real Christmas sounding thing. So, you know, the first song was "Twas the Night Before Crushmas." Then it moves on to "Happy Birthday Jesus." Not sure if that's a real Christmas song, but we'll go with it. Now, one thing that is pretty funny about uh, that Bation Master does, and you know, you're going through at this part, you know, and you're about almost eight minutes in. And you're not like, okay, you know, this is very loosely Christmas music. And then this is when the album really starts to pick up after eight minutes. I have for Christmas. Yes. Yes. You get the point, I'm not going to subject you to that. It keeps going. And, this actually happens twice. Towards the end of the song, that just happens for a split second out of fucking nowhere. And they start playing music again for another 10 or 15 seconds. And then it's like a 30, 40 second thing. And, if it doesn't make you laugh, I don't know what else will, because it's very off-putting. And great because it's finally you think this is just going to be basically a slam or brutal death metal um, album that just is called Christmas titles and they have random sound clips clips it doesn't really feel like a Christmas album until you hit this marker and the poor singing really is what sets off the Christmas thing in its entirely entirety so Really, it's not until the cake is a lie that you really start seeing, you know, that these are mostly just covers of Christmas songs. It's a little harder to pick up on that until you make it until, you know, like a fourth through the album. And I will play you a little bit of the song. 
by the cake is a lie. Merry motherfucking Christmas. And then it's a little sound clip, whatever, Christmassy stuff. Um, that's the real semblance of you can really start telling this is more Christmas themed, you know, not just from random sound clips. Um, the actual music, and I'm, I know, he did go, but like actual legitimate musicianship and actual music that they actually start singing Merry Motherfucking Christmas in part of it. It's like, okay, finally, we're getting somewhere where the actual music versus the random sound clips and shit. And there's actually Christmas themed. And, you know, honestly, so the next song, Cerberus, Satan Bells, you get little semblances um, of what I previously said. You know, you start realizing, oh, yeah, no, this is finally Christmas. Um, you know, more than just Christmas themed lyrics, okay? You start to get the actual sound of that these are actual Christmas songs um, actually covered. And you hear that more in Cerebus's Satan Bells, which is basically Jingle Bells, in the guitar riffing and whatnot, um, little places like that, and you hear the sort of familiar sound of Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, da -na 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 -na. and you can pick up on that sound, the da -na 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 part through it. Like, okay, cool. So, you know, it only took you halfway through the album to really start fully building what this whole album should have been, in my personal opinion. Um, but really, to be completely honest, the band Cunt Cuntly is the one that killed it. They did the most straight-up Christmas-themed ones, and the most funny and memorable ones were from them. So, that's a ridiculous name. Not that the other ones aren't. But still. Uh, let's see, let's put this right about here for you guys. Must have been some magic and... But yeah, they just literally Frosty the Snowman. That's literally the whole song. It's just the literal song, Frosty the Snowman, made in death metal style. Boom, there you go. I think this would have been a lot funnier if, you know, the first few songs were literally just Christmas songs that they just covered in that genre versus that genre that made music inspired by Christmas songs, right? There's inspired by and parody, and there's literally, we are going to cover this Christmas song in a new style. And it's kind of split down the middle with, you know, a couple songs here that it's basically just new music that they made that's inspired by Christmas, sort of middle point and literal legitimate covers at the end. And it's kind of cool, you know, it's a little different throughout the whole thing, but the bulk of it, the best parts, are the end, the last several songs that are the funnier, the more catchy, because it really gets you into the Christmas spirit, whereas the first couple just sound like brutal death metal, and it's really hard to really understand that this is Christmas-themed. And if you're doing a Christmas-themed split, you might as well just go all out Christmas. Yeah, so that's really my gripes with it. Um, I wish it was legitimate just Christmas covers. I think it would be funnier. Um, you can't really tell what they're going for for the first couple of songs, as much as I love Volvidini in particular. Sounds great, but I could hear it in a legitimate Volvidini album, and I probably, if you take the sound clips out, I wouldn't have known it was about Christmas. And for a Christmas album... Yeah, so, all in all, look, it made me laugh. It's funny, and it'll make the average person laugh. What?
does it stand this test of time? No, it's kind of dumb. I could understand forgetting about it by the time it's next Christmas. It's funny. It's a quick 25 minutes of your life to just get a little giggle. It's too fucking ridiculous. Even if you're not super into death metal, if you just skip halfway through and play the last couple of songs, it'll make you laugh at the very least. I can tell you that much. As a legitimate album, eh. But it's funny. It'll make you laugh. Put you in the Christmas spirit. And that's really all I'm looking for in a Christmas album, right? So, all in all, I'm going to give it 6 out of 10 stars. Because it's funny. Quality-wise, it's kind of like... Eh. But it's really funny. Especially at the end. It's just so fucking cheesy that... It, it just has to make you laugh. So that bumps it up a little bit, in my opinion. It's the cheese factor and all. So, thank you. I have a good day, you guys. Check that shit out if you want to just laugh for a few minutes and not legitimately listen to, like, solid, good music. Not that it's bad quality, but you know what I mean. Serious music. If you want something funny, then why not? If you want something serious, you definitely should not check out this album.